Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Dokotek. It's great to be back. Um, it's great to be in Pristina, and it's a lovely festival, so many great people, and uh, you're inspiring me a lot. So I'm going to continue our maze, and uh, hopefully we can have a partnership forever. And uh, Amaze and Dokotek are growing together like a family. Um, I'm from Amaze, I'm Torsten S. Wiedemann. And um, yeah, I'm gonna bring um, some games. So this is something what we do. It's at the Amaze Berlin Festival in 2019. Um, we also do some awards, the Amaze Awards. It's happening during the Amaze Festival in Berlin. And uh, we do magazines. And we also have a digital garden. This is uh, what we brought here, the digital garden. We wanna bring games with nature together and uh, that the people have the feeling of what they should care about, not about games, they should care about nature and climate and uh, also play games, of course, because with games you can learn. Games are teaching you and um, we do magazines about it and uh, we also do train jams um, from Johannesburg to Cape Town uh, where people are doing games on the train and we have a topic and it was very, very successful and very fun. It's also very nice because you go through the whole country from South Africa, a beautiful country. Um, and we also do some kind of weird stuff, some stoner games, because, I mean, you have to enjoy some life, you know, and also combine it with games. And so we did a game jam for the Amaze Festival. It's a lot of fun to play the games because they make you stoned. You know, when you play, you got stoned. So without smoking stuff. Um, yes, so now we are here and that's why we got invited for the Hyper Talks. The Hyper Talks are a kind of a micro talk format. You have five minutes time, in five minutes you can say whatever you want, you can also perform, you can do very weird shit and uh, in, yeah, entertain the people. So this is what you have to say hyper hyper when you see this and then we can try it, like, I, I, I flip it back, and now we can do it. Right, so it's coming just randomly, hyper hyper, and you're gonna say hyper hyper, it just gives you in a good mood, you know, and uh, we want to be in a good mood, right? <laughs> so, um, hyper hyper, and, um, yeah, did I tell what Amaze is doing? Amaze is doing, um, events around video games, independent video games, alternative video games, experimental video games. We don't care about mainstream games, we don't care about industry, we do what we want. We are the punks of the digital age. Yes. Hyper, hyper. <laughs> yeah, we have lovely speakers today. And um, before we start with this, um, we also want to talk about the punks of the digital age. Oh yeah, yeah, right, this. And um, for me, the punks of the digital age are not super rebellion and they don't whatever, um, do whatever they want. So it's more really they care. They be, they're being exclu inclusive. <sighs> right, it's a test, it's a test. Right, um, inclusive and experimental and Diverse, how come this diverse? But diverse is also very important, of course. Uh, experimental and radically honest. Hyper, hyper. These are the punks of the digital age. And uh, diverse, experimental, radical, honest, and subversive. And of course, the punks of the digital age are respectful and the care of all the other people in the world. These are the punks of the digital age. And what we are creating, that's why it's all, this thing is not working very properly, because we don't care, but we care about chaos, and we are not caring about negative things, we are taking care about positive things in our chaos, that's why hashtag positive chaos. Thank you. Oh, I love you. So, that was my hyper talk, super radical, I guess. And please now welcome on stage Christian Cocotte. I'm working with him since years together. He's building exhibitions and all this kind of stuff um, at a Maze Festival in Berlin. And uh, he's a good dear friend. And he has to say something very important. Yes, Christian Cocotte, this is your clicker and have fun.
left hand and right hand, what's your favorite? <laughs> okay. So, speaking of radically honest, hello Christian Cockert, I have to tell you something. I would like to speak about game jams. Um, I'm not sure if anybody is familiar with what game jams are. Some cool people here did this just this weekend. Game Jams is kind of like a format of doing games where you uh, have like 24 or 48 hours to like crunch out a game with a bunch of friends or team of people you didn't know before and you kind of wait for the theme, what's gonna, what's gonna be the theme and then you have 48 hours to not sleep and just pump out the game. Um, which means I also want to talk in that same breath about video games and the most difficult relationship of my life. Um, I'm doing video games now for quite some time and it turns out to be quite a difficult relationship. Um, so I do make games, I do not like playing them at all anymore and actually I don't really like them being played so much also. Um, I told you it's difficult somehow. Um, I used to love playing games, you know, like when I was a teenager, you know, all that good stuff, you know, like shooters, strategy games, whatever, but I, what I actually really loved about them was this, you know, organizing LAN parties, being together with friends all night in front of computers, Red Bulls, going for it. And then I learned programming. And kind of it was much more fun and like, you know, you get into creation, you make all of the stuff yourself and... <laughs> now I have game jams, uh, which kind of seems like a very similar thing. It's just like, you know, this is how it looks like. A couple of people in front of computers, not sleeping, Red Bull, <laughs> going for it. And... Uh, Kind of, if you look at it, it uh, you know, it kind of looks the same. I just realized that when I was doing this talk this morning. Um, and, you know, for me, you know, I started making games during this game, James. I was running away from kind of like a, a traditional programming office job. I was doing this for five years, doing this. Uh, normal programming stuff and I decided fuck it I'm doing games and I got into it doing game jams and it was not really about a love for games I, you know I lost it for a while already it was about playing with my skills right um, it was like a sport more of a performance actually you know like getting into character you know my audience was our team my friends not actually the people that would play the game but the people that would show up while you're making the game uh, it was a show for, with and my friends, performing art, you know. I would get into costumes, I would spend hours before the game jump starts decorating our table. You know, it was a ship to be sailed. And, uh, yeah, I used to call it a war grave, you know. It was like an art party. It was like, you know, I was getting pumped for that kind of stuff. And, uh, yeah, this is how it looked like. It's me in a king's robe here. Uh, and yeah, it was about improvisation, it's about friendship, it's a sailing ship in the storm with the crew. It's really, it wasn't that much about games, it's about, again, a couple people in front of computers doing their best for a couple, of, for a couple nights. And uh, I did not care much about the games when they were finished, not the ones we made, that other people made. They were kind of like the glitter in your face after a good party, you know? Like the consequence more than the reason why we did it. Uh, something to smile at in the end, a fleeting, what did I say, a fleeting look in the mirror. Uh, but the performance was over, right? It was really about the performance kind of. And, and this makes me think about games because like I had so much fun doing these game jams, but like playing games is still and, like, seeing the game industry, it still gives me a lot of nausea and problems and you know, my conclusion at this point is I believe in play, however, I believe the act of creation to be the truest form of play there is, right? And my problem is that I find it difficult to create things for others to consume and so I don't see many of the, I don't see the act of creation and the consumption of video games so much. There are some exceptions, of course, but it feels just dishonored, dishonest to create things for others to consume. And the problem is the, me 
the thing is so the medium is the message you can make video games that allow artists to create of course they're great examples uh, that tackle this problem in some ways but for me this is kind of the difficulty it's a an offer for consumption right and after actually spending three years making and releasing a real game after all of these game jams I concluded for myself that 48 hours is really as much attention as I'm, you know, allow myself, as I'm comfortable to give this medium, uh, you know, in a healthy manner somehow. Uh, oh. Thank you for listening to my relationship problems with video games. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. If you have a, some questions, you can get to him later, right? I mean. So, something happened to my, my computer. Okay, cool. So, we also worked. This is what we did. We worked a lot. We did a game jam. In Pristina, it's not the first game jam, but it was the second or the third. Um, we came here last year and did a game jam with eight people. It was also very, very nice. But this year, we had, uh, I think, Agnesa and Lick will say a little bit more words about the game jam, um, but this time we have three games and we had kind of 20 participants over the whole 24 hours. It was very successful and it's, it's, you can also see that it's very important when you continue some kind of stuff. You know, when you find people who are dedicated to something, people who are not looking for money, people who are looking for building a community building something, flowering something up. And this is something what I'm very, very happy about, that Amaze could kick it off, and then they did the Global Game Jam, and this year we did with Dokotech together the 24 Hours Game Jam. And please welcome on stage, Agnesa, Beluga, and Leke Sahachia. <laughs> Sahachia, sorry. <laughs> thank you, uh, thank you everybody. It was actually hilarious because I saw my name was Agnesa Beluga and I'm like, hi, that's my spirit animal. My actual last name is Belego, but it's cool. I like being an intelligent dolphin sometimes when I get into the sea, that's what I feel like. Um, but anyway, thank you Thorsten for uh, the, the introductions. Um, the, I'm a game developer, game designer by profession and Leka is a game developer as well. Uh, working at it as an indie studio. He's got a studio in Kosovo. Yeah, yeah, give him a hand, come on. Woo! Yeah, that's not something that you hear about every day. Um, their indie studios are happening in Kosovo. Indie studios are opening that actually do develop games or they try their best to develop games. Most of our communities, we've, we've seen that, that they don't they don't really believe, uh, developers in general, they don't really believe that they can make a living out of games, but that's not stopping them from trying anyway. Um, so that's what we discovered when we came back. Uh, both of us had a life outside of here. Uh, when we finally came back to Kosovo, we didn't just want to leave and say, well, you know, I want to go back to that life, but we saw the potential here and we saw that people really wanted, really needed a safe space to be a game developer and to not be chastised for it, in a sense. Um, and we realized that as game developers, we tend to hide under rocks. Um, like we, we work separately in our rooms, we do that, we don't want to tell people that we develop games, not all the time because they don't get it, everybody thinks that, you know, games are childish and, you know, they're immature and we've been, I think over the past few years, that changing, but the community has kind of suffered from that and we haven't really exposed ourselves and put ourselves out there. But once we had our first game jam, um, a few people showed up. That was like two years ago, the first one with Dokotech. Few people showed up, but it was really important to us to see that something like that was happening that was with Dokotech and Amaze. The second one, the Global Game Jam that um, the Girls Code in Kosovo and Open Data organized, that was a huge success. A lot of people showed up and we realized, hold on a second, we have to keep doing this. We have to give people that space game developers or people who are passionate about the games industry or just games in general and they don't know how to apply themselves into that industry. We have to give them the room where it's safe for them to show up and say, well, this is what I can do. I don't know if I can do it right, but at least for 48 hours or for 24 hours, I'm going to try. Eh, whatever, you know our names, it's fine. <laughs> uh, and 
that's what we did this time when we were called by Dokotech and said, hey, we want to make another game jam. We wanted to make it happen. This year's game jam had a lot of people showing up. Um, there was 15 people. Not all of them could stay 24 hours, because as we know, we all have our day jobs that we have to go back to. But it was lovely to see that that community that is building did find the time after their jobs or you know whenever they didn't have to be somewhere else they showed up and tried to help each other in whatever way they could like they just inserted themselves into various teams and it was important for us that they showed up and said hey how can i help although there were teams staying there for 24 hours crunching that time and losing sleep over uh, over having to make over wanting to make a game in 24 hours and that was incredible so I want a big, big applause for the teams that showed up this year, have three games developed. Great job. And thank, you for, thank you guys for coming and for sticking it out for 24 hours. Without further ado, I do want to give the light, <laughs> the light has to shine over them now. I'll call over the first team and they'll explain what their game was all about. This year's theme, by the way, was, um, well, Dokutech's theme, digitizing the human and humanizing the digital. But what the games were truly about was how we perceive that theme and randomly basically have three different words that um, all the participants just thought up when they, when they heard the subject. Um, and so they didn't really have a say on what those three words were. They're gonna tell you what those words were and then they had to make a game out of that. So pretty creative on they, their side, what they ended up with. Okay, la Beat, Marianet, Beat, come on. So, hello everyone. Uh, just let me switch this. So, uh, hello everyone again. I'm Marianit, and together with Labeat and Berti, we'd like to represent you a short simulation game uh, made in the recent Game Jam. So, when we, when we think of uh, humanizing the digital and uh, digitizing the human, a lot of things and polemics come in mind. But what we thought was, why, why don't we combine these uh, to each other in a between world, somewhere in between? So we thought of making a bridge or a feeling that gives you uh, of combining these two separated worlds. Kind of making a connection between these two. So. We thought of combining sports with the virtual reality and uh, giving you a feeling, humans giving uh, a feeling to digital world and the computer giving some of the human uh, world. The boxing simulation uh, game is just a short game, it's just a test one. So we can here see the, the punching bag uh, that you can train off, test your mechanics uh, of boxing, uh, move, moving around, you can uh, you can see also the ring, and right there you can spar with a trainer. Moving on, when you actually remove his health bar, you can just just a bit. You can actually knock him out. It's you know it's just a testing phase, it's also buggy and glitchy, but we would like to represent uh, this kind of between, this connected world between human and digital world uh, of virtual reality and made this uh, with the help of VR uh, in a boxing simulation game. So this is the whole picture of the game, it's just uh, an early phase, it's a test phase and we we were just kind of trying to give that feeling uh, to us. Also, uh, I would like to say to you that we have the, devi uh, the device uh, inside there on the second floor. Whoever wants to try it, you can come along and give it a try. So, uh, thank you for your attention. I hope you can have a great time. Second team, no, 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 it works. All right, the second team, Mecha Dad. 
Round of applause for them. Hello, everyone. So, I am Benat Hassani. Uh, I'm 16 years old and I work at Prisma Games. It's a uh, as Ganesha said, there are many, uh, you know, teams starting to, to pop up, you know, for indie games, and we're definitely one of them. So for the 24 hours, we made a game called Mecha Dead, and it's a Killing Floor inspired game. So yeah, what is Mecha Dead? Well, as I said, it's a game we made for 24 hours, and it's uh, inspired by games like uh, Doom, Killing Floor, and all the good, you know, stuff. So right now we're going to play a video of the game. It's pretty cool. Technical problems, I guess. There. This is supposed to have sound, but... So, as I said, in this game you're supposed to kill as much robots as possible. Uh, the reason why you kill robots, you'll see in a second right now. Ekadet. Coming never. It's never coming out, of course, because it's a game that we made for 24 hours, so of course we're not going to publish it. So, how do we come up with this game? Well, in the game jam we had to, you know, scramble some words, and we had to pick three of them. Each teammate picked one, and the result was really, really, really weird. So we got sentient AI, robot religion, and corruption. The way we imagine the story of the game would be is you have the sentient AI, you know, like robots, who have created a religion and is trying to corrupt Earth. I know that's very cheesy, but we had to do it. The clicker's not working. So. So how was the actual experience? Well, it was amazing actually, so can you? So this is our experience. A 24 hour game jam is something you definitely want to go to if you have the skills. It's a social event where you meet many and uh, many game developers, artists, and all the skill sets you need to make a game. Uh, it was always fun to be honest, and there was no such thing as boring in this event, you know? It was always constant uh, fun, and it was really interesting. Now, even though it was really fun, there were definitely difficulties. For 24 hours, you get very sleepy, and you don't have a place you know, to sleep except for your chair, and you have a limited time, which means there will be a lot of bugs in your game. Now, luckily I don't have to present the game. We just made a video as best as we could, so you won't see the bugs. But, yeah, these are pretty much the difficulties you'll always encounter in a game jam. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. So, the third game jam team. Come up the stage, come on, guys. The microphone's for you. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Selim Aloku and our team, it is, thank you. So uh, my colleagues are Diamant and Granite, 
so thank you once uh, for helping us and just gathering the gamers in Kosovo for this uh, occasion and uh, basically just uh, helping us to become more socialized and also just create some connections and possibly just create something good for, for our country. So our title game is Unbecoming. As the previous speakers uh, told you, the, the story was just uh, digitizing the humanity or uh, humanizing the, the, the digital. So what we came up uh, were just basically some uh, random words and uh, one of them was cyborgs uh, and the, the last one was becoming a human. So what we thought of uh, so the, the nature of the game was just basically uh, uh, the, the land or the earth is, is just uh, going under an attack from the uh, aliens and so basically the cyborgs and you need to protect them. You are the main character, the human one, and you need to protect it. So uh, the technology that we use is Unity as a game engine and a sprite uh, for uh, just making the design in, in pixelated. Planet Earth uh, is in danger, so it is your time to protect it. Here you go, you can play it. The game is simple. You just aim and shoot to try to defeat the cyborg. Well, in the background, what it happens is that as much score as you do, then the background will change. Basically, uh, if, if the cyborg is winning, then the, the Earth will turn into a cyborg planet. Otherwise, it's vice versa, the, the planet Earth will become still a, an Earth. It's a beautiful country, or just planet. So, uh, at the end, if you are successful at the game, you can win. Otherwise, you will lose and just be helpless. Uh, the game is available in our device, so if anyone wants to try it, uh, please feel free to come to us and reach with us. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you very much. Wonderful games, amazing games, I would say. I think we should do this again. And uh, thank you to Go Tokotech, and thank you for all of you that you are listening to us. Because games are very important nowadays. These are the things for the 21st century. Century, what you have to do, you have to play. It's a medium of the 21st century. It's an art form. It can be very, very meaningful. It could be just entertainment, but we are looking as well for meaningful stories. And uh, that's why Amaze is there. And if you have a chance to come to Berlin, come to the Amaze Festival in Berlin. It's always happening every year. It's an annual festival. Otherwise, I come to you and we bring some game jams and some exhibitions here. Thank you very much. And stay Amaze and enjoy the rest of the evening. And big applause to the game chambers and the organizers and the festival team. Yes! Hyper, hyper!